Okay, cool. Let's get started uh, for this last talk of, uh, of the day. Um, thanks for coming. I know it's the last one, so you know, it's a pretty sparse uh, audience. Uh, I'll try to keep it uh, entertaining. I have very few slides, and then I actually want to go into demos. I want to show you, you know, uh, a few tools and what you can do uh, on a cloud stack uh, cloud. So my name is Sebastian Guasgan. I'm a PMC member for Apache Cloud Stack. So I'm a, I'm a committer, and I, uh, I'm part of the, the management committee for, uh, for Apache Cloud Stack. Uh, and we're going to talk about clients and tools. You know, of course, when you look at infrastructure as a service, the landscape in open source, uh, you've got different solutions to build that cloud, you know, private, public. So you know Open Nebula from Spain, Eucalyptus, which was really the, the first one to try to clone EC2. Uh, there was a talk about Ganeti in, uh, you know, in the next room earlier. Uh, OpenStack, of course, you know the, the foundation. And then CloudStack, which is an Apache uh, software. It's a top-level project. Originally, it was uh, written by a startup called Cloud.com, and it was uh, acquired by Citrix in 2011. Then in April 2012, they donated the software to the, uh, to the Apache Software Foundation. And then we became a top-level project uh, in April. Uh, when you join Apache, you know, if you don't know about the Apache processes, first when there is a donation, you go through incubation. Uh, and then the incubation period, you know, you have mentors uh, who are established members of the uh, Apache Software Foundation, and they help you grow, uh, grow a community, make sure that that software and that community are going to be uh, sustainable. So we went through the incubation process. You know, in addition to building the, the community, you also have to make sure that all your licenses is in order and, and, and things like this. So we got out of the incubator uh, in March of this year. So it's been, uh, you know, uh, six to uh, seven months that we've been a top-level project. So that's your that's your choice in open source if you are trying to build a cloud, whether it's public or a, a private cloud. But really, you know, I, I don't want to talk about you know what's really in, inside CloudStack. I'm, I'm making the assumption that okay, you take CloudStack and you build that cloud, okay? And then the question is really okay, you have a cloud, now what, okay? You can, you know, all of those systems, uh, you can start virtual machine, start, stop, you know, suspend, you name it. That's the basic functionality. If we go into all the different features, you know, of course, you, you support different types of storage, different types of networking, networking services, and so on. But really, you know, my question is, you have a cloud now, what do you do? Okay? Uh, so that's the point of going through a few tools and, and showing you a few clients that you have with CloudStack, showing you the, the variety of tools that you have. And, uh, and then show you a few, uh, a few demos. Uh, you know, I do have to, uh, to give a, a quick intro about CloudStack. Uh, who uses CloudStack? You know, out of the six in the room. <laughs> okay, six of them. Uh, so, you know, if you don't like the term cloud or uh, infrastructure as a service uh, term, it's really a data center orchestrator. Okay, so you install the app. Uh, CloudStack works as a management server, so you have a single node that's a management server. You can, you can set up you know, a high availability management server with load balancing and then replication of the database. But basically, it's a, a single management server, Java application running with, with Tomcat, and you have a MySQL database. Then you need a, a form of hypervisors, and there we are hypervisor agnostic, so you can pick you know, f flavors of Zen, KVM, uh, VMware ESX. We also do bare metal, and then uh, recently we have the uh, the LXC containers uh, in there, and I'm sure we'll get Docker, you know, uh, uh, pretty soon. So it's really a data center orchestrator. You build that infrastructure, and when you run the management server, you get you know uh, services features to manage the virtual machine, hypervisor agnostic. You get uh, a system to manage storage, not only the uh, the image the images, but also the data volumes if you want to, uh, to attach data volumes to your virtual machine. And you get network services. Those are really the three main characteristics of any YAS, you know, ma manage the compute, the storage, and the network. The network can be very, uh, uh, you know, involved, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this. We have two types of networking. We have basic networking and advanced. In advanced networking, we isolate all the users in VLANs. And in basic, you know, all the users share the same uh, broadcast domain, okay? So isolation between them needs to be done differently, and we do it with security groups uh, just like Amazon. 
Now, in networking, you can also talk to physical devices, uh, load F5, load balancer, Juniper, SRX, firewall, uh, Netscaler, uh, you name it. Uh, when you install CloudStack, you also get an image management, of course. Uh, you get an identity management system with an LDAP integration and so on. You get a default dashboard, and I'm going to show you a snapshot. You get usage monitoring, uh, usage metering, sorry, for you know, billing and so on. And you get an API. Of course, all those systems, they expose an API. And that's the, you know, all the tools that I'm going to show you are using this API. And that's how you program the, that cloud. Uh, we have a native API, which is really cloud stack specific, but we also have a mapping with the Amazon EC2 API. Uh, when you install the management server, you get the default dashboard, and that's, uh, that's the example. That's just in Chinese. We worked a lot on uh, translation, and uh, you know, this is just for fun to show it in, uh, in Chinese. But that's the default, it's just JavaScript application. You manage the infrastructure, the images, the networking, the service offering, the instance types. Everything can be done through the, uh, through the UI, uh, but basically the UI is making use of that native CloudStack API. It's, uh, it's fairly involved. Uh, there are over 300 methods uh, you know, in, that, in that API. Uh, it can be as simple as all the you know, deploy virtual machines, start, stop, you name it, create VPN, create load balancers, uh, you know, manage the infrastructure, create users, you name it. So it's, uh, it's fairly involved. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a RESTful API in the very strict sense. It's a HTTP uh, query API that can return XML or JSON, okay? Uh, so basically, <coughs> once you get the management server, you can look at, you can go through the dashboard, uh, do a few basic calls, and then if you run Firebug, for example, you'll, you'll have a, a clue of the, uh, the way the API uh, works, and, and you have it here. Uh, so basically, we pass the, the, the method uh, as a command uh, key, and then you pass key value pairs as uh, parameters, okay? So pretty, pretty standard uh, things. So now that you have, you know, you've deployed, you've created that infrastructure with CloudStack, you have that cloud, you know that you have this API, so what do you do? Okay, you have a cloud, now what? Uh, so of course, you know, some of the uh, clients or users even can still use the default dashboard uh, but the, uh, the clients that you can find out there are even more powerful. Uh, so what I wanted to do in the talk is go through you know, a few of the clients and then go into the, the demos. Uh, the basic client is uh, CloudMonkey. That's our uh, default uh, command line interface that's really for sysadmin uh, who want to manage the cloud. Users can also use that, uh, that interface, but it's very... Uh, it's basic, but it's 100% API complete. Okay? So there's a full coverage of the API. Uh, it's as simple to install, it's as simple as pip install cloud monkey. And then you set up you know, the, your endpoint, you set up your API key, secret key, and then you start talking to your cloud, issuing all the, all the API commands that you, know, you wish to do. So deploy virtual machine. If you're an administrator of the cloud, you can also add host, change the network, uh, you name it. Uh, this is Python, uh, but of course there are different languages depending on what you're looking for and, and what's your preference you know, in language. So you'll find a, a Ruby client that is now fairly complete. Uh, there are also you know, even Perl client. If you go to GitHub, you'll see you know, roughly 20 clients out there that you could use uh, in your preferred uh, programming language. Um, Apache itself has lots of very interesting projects that have been built or written as uh, wrappers on top of all the clouds that you can find. Okay, so jclouds is one of them. It's, uh, it's uh, written in Java, and it can talk to all the cloud providers, public cloud providers, Rackspace, CC2, uh, I mean Amazon, uh, GoGrid, you know, SoftLayer, you name it. But it also talks to um, you know, the basic API of the uh, software. So if you're deploying a private cloud with CloudStack, you could use jcloud and talk directly uh, to your private cloud, okay? So it, jclouds, and I'll, I'll mention libcloud, but they support public cloud provider, but also they have interaction with the, the native API of all those solutions. Uh, you find other things like, <coughs> that are more involved, like Stackmate is something that, that's coming up for CloudStack. Uh, it's basically uh, AWS CloudFormation uh, clone, 
okay? So it, run, it, it works as a server that you deploy on your cloud, and then it can actually process Amazon CloudFormation templates. And CloudFormation is interesting because if you're trying to deploy you know, several machines that have relationship uh, between them, uh, typically a master and then some slaves, then you define that in a, in a, in a CloudFormation template and you can feed it to, uh, to Stackmate. So that's, that's very interesting. But in, in general, you know, the, the, the main category is that you're going to have the, the native Cloud Stack API uh, coming with, uh, with Cloud Stack. With, we have a, a bridge to the Amazon uh, services. So if you've used Amazon and you have tools right now to use uh, EC2, you could use those same tools and even those, the, those same scripts uh, and then talk directly to a Cloud Stack cloud, and that would, uh, that would work. Uh, there's been a lot of debates about, you know, you need a standard for cloud. <clears throat> and of course, uh, Cloud Stack Native API is not a standard. There are only two standards out there these days, which is, you know, OCCI from the Open uh, Grid Forum, OGF. And then, that's the OCCI right there. Uh, and then the other standard from DMTF is uh, CIMI, C-I-M-I. Uh, so th those are the only two standards. Uh, we now have uh, an OCCI uh, interface. So if you want to use tools that, you know, an OCCI, if you want to use an OCCI client, so you want to make sure that you're not uh, locked in into a particular vendor and you want to use a standard, then you could use a standard like OCCI and talk to CloudStack. We're working on a, a CIMI uh, interface. So that, that should take, you know, within a month or two, we should also have a CIMI uh, interface. So I think, you know, it's very important to, to make sure that you know, we don't want to lock people into our native API. It doesn't make any sense. We want to provide all the interfaces that you guys want to use. So if you want to use standards, you should be able to use the standards. If you want to use the native API, you should use the native API. Amazon, you can use Amazon. And then I work with some, uh, some students in Ireland, and this is the Google Compute Engine logo. So we have a, a GCE interface. So if, you, if you're using Google Compute Engine right now, you deploy a private cloud with the cloud stack, you run our GCE interface in front of it, which runs as a server, and then you can use the same tools, the GC util from Google, you use that client, and you talk to cloud stack, and it works great. Uh, so that's, that's fairly important. The, the CME, a little bit of a shame that, that we don't have it already, because in Apache, there is a project called Delta Cloud, Apache Delta Cloud, it's a top level project as well. Uh, it's all Ruby. Uh, it was given to Apache by Red Hat, but unfortunately they, they decided to, uh, you know, not contribute that much to, to the effort. But um, Delta Cloud was the only software for a long time that provided the CIMI interface. So if you were using Delta Cloud, you had that standard, um, you know, available. We'll probably, uh, we'll probably, you know, even though there's less activity in Delta Cloud, we'll, we'll still go forward and put a, a Cloud Stack backend in there so that if you want to see me through, uh, through Delta Cloud, you'll, you'll get it. And please, you know, stop, stop me if you, have, uh, if you have any questions, you know, no problem. Uh, so demos, you know, that's what I find really interesting. I give quite a bit of talk and I'm tired of going through slides and slides and slides. So, you know, let's go through, through, uh, uh, through demos. So what I want to do is, uh, is four demos, okay, of using different clients and configuration management system. Because if you have a cloud, you want to deploy nodes and you want to configure them so that you run your apps, okay? So whether it's, you know, it could be as simple as MySQL database, as involved as, you know, a MongoDB cluster with multiple, uh, you know, shards and replication and things like this, uh, a React cluster if you want to build uh, your own S3 interface and, or a, a Hadoop cluster if you want to do Hadoop on demand, for example. So when you're trying to, to deploy those, you know, involved infrastructure onto a cloud, you need some tools and you need to automate things. So it's very important, you know, from our cloud stack standpoint that, yeah, okay, you build a cloud, but then we need to make sure that all those tools work well with cloud stack so that you can automate those things. Uh, I'm going to go through libcloud a little bit, which is, uh, uh, it's very similar to jclouds, but see, it's a Python uh, it's a Python. It's written in Python. It's an API wrapper on, on top of all the uh, the cloud providers and cloud software that you can find. So I'm going to show you how you interact with a cloud stack based cloud using using LibCloud. Uh, I'm going to show you SaltStack. Uh, 
because of course, you know, if you're doing configuration management, you've heard about Puppet and Chef. Uh, there's another alternative out there, which is SaltStack. Uh, it's Python based, and I'm a Python guy, so of course I tend to gravitate towards Python uh, projects. But SaltStack is very nice. And what we're going to do is that we're going to provision uh, a SaltStack master, a master node that's the equivalent of a Puppet master. We're going to provision that automatically in a cloud, and then we're going to start additional nodes, and we're going to see how we can configure those nodes using the, the master. So all of this deployed from my, lap, from my laptop in the cloud. I think it's pretty cool. We're going to do fairly the same thing with Chef. Um, the reason why I'm doing Chef is because there is a very nice uh, uh, Knife CloudStack client uh, available. So if you're using Chef and you know the, the Knife utility, who uses Chef? Yeah. So if you use Chef and you know about Knife, you guys use Knife, right? Yeah. So you can use uh, the CloudStack plugin and automatically you, you can provision machines and uh, define recipes and then provision nodes like this. So I'm going to do a, a little Chef demo where we, we're going to start uh, an Elasticsearch uh, node uh, in, a, in a cloud stack cloud. And then the last one is also with a, an Apache project, uh, Apache Ware. Uh, it uses JClouds underneath, but uh, Ware was, was developed originally by the clouds, the, 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 sorry, the guys at, uh, at Cloudera who are doing a, a big data um, a Hadoop distribution, sorry, the, the Cloudera Hadoop distribution, CDH. And uh, they developed Weir so that you had a, a command line tool to be able to configure Hadoop clusters in the cloud. Okay, so I'm going to show you how you use Weir to to uh, provision a Hadoop cluster. Sounds good. Excited. Okay, cool. Uh, so Leap Cloud, as I said, you know it's. Uh, uh, it's Python and it's uh, an abstraction. It's an abstraction layer on top of all the, the cloud provider that you have. And you know, I have to agree that you got you got so many. You know, it's uh, uh, it's almost tiring. Uh, cloud Sigma, Soft Layer, Eucalyptus, OpenStack. You know, software distribution, uh, TerraMark. You know, a cloud. Uh, there's probably HP Cloud, Open Nebula, Elasticos, Linode, GCE, GoGrid. I mean, you name it. All of these have. Um, a driver in LeapCloud. And what LeapCloud gives you is a common API. So it was not trying to create a standard, it was really trying to create a wrapper that had a common API. So it's very nice because you can use like uh, list all the images, list, list, list the instance types, uh, list the, the availability zone, create the nodes, configure the nodes. All those are in the common API, but that common API is very small. Okay, so that's a little bit of the, uh, the issue. So I every, every backend in there actually has extension functions to provide additional functionality that are specific to that cloud. Okay? Uh, so let's, <coughs> let's have a look at LibCloud. Uh, I don't want to bore you with code, but if you want to look at the code, that's, that's a, a tiny you know, example of uh, you know, Python loading the, uh, the modules. You create a driver that is cloud stack specific. You define your API secret keys just like with Amazon. And then uh, here in that example, I'm, I'm running an interactive shell. Uh, so you'll, you'll see what it, what it does. Can you see this? Is it big enough? Yeah? OK. So this is uh, IPython. Uh, if you don't know uh, Python, it gives you a nice, uh, a nice shell. So you have here, I've done a connection to this cloud, exoscale.ch, okay? And actually I should go back and show you exoscale. Um, I'm using it, this as an example of a, a public cloud that is using CloudStack. It's a, it's a cloud in Switzerland, and I, I live in Switzerland, so I, I know these guys and they've done a very good job. So they are basically a public cloud provider that's using CloudStack. They're running a business, you know, selling cloud services. They have uh, this one, Open Cloud, which is, uh, that's the Cloud Stack Cloud. So you can easily get an account. They give you a little bit of credits if you wanna, if you wanna try it out and, and, and learn the, uh, the Cloud Stack API. Um, you know, just going through this, they've created their own dashboard. So it doesn't look like anything I showed you earlier. That's not the default dashboard from Cloud Stack. They created their own, uh, you know, dashboard. If you wanna create an instance here through their UI, 
it's as simple as you know here uh, demo zero zero uh, create there's only one zone one data center you pick an image they have predefined images you pick an instance type let's do micro uh, if you want to create additional disk blah blah uh, and key pair and security groups uh, there you go What they've done in terms of networking here, uh, it's a little bit interesting. They, they're using a basic zone, so all the virtual machines share the same layer two. So isolation between the user is through security groups. Uh, are you guys familiar with security groups? Okay, so in Amazon, that's, that's also how they do. So basically, you create a security group, you, you give it a name, uh, and then in that security group, you define rules, which are basically IP table rules where you say, okay, open 22, port 22 for everyone. And then you can also define specific uh, rules for within machines in that group, okay? So <clears throat> that's the basic dashboard. And they've done some clever things to pre-stage the images. So the, here the instance is already running. Uh, what happens since it's a basic zone is that every instance gets a public IP here, okay? So it's specific to their cloud. So here that's, that's running. So here in that example of LibCloud, you know, I start the shell and it, you know, it auto automatically created a, uh, a connection to that, that cloud. So now in LibCloud, you do things like this uh, list. You get type, you know, tab, uh, tab completion, list location, and you get, um, you get things like this. So it's an instance of the location. It tells you, okay, so it's uh, Switzerland. Uh, the country is wrong, but that's, uh, that's no problem. You get uh, list images. So those are all the, the images that are available. Uh, you get uh, list sizes. Uh, those are the instance types available in your cloud. Okay. Um, I actually created additional functions that, that look a little bit nicer. So if you do list images, you get in return. Uh, so what you get on those clouds, okay, you got all the flavors of Linux. Here for them, they actually attach specific uh, disk disk sizes to those images, so that's why you see different images. And this is the UUID that's uh, internal to uh, to CloudStack. Uh, <clears throat> you get interesting things like you know if you want to access an image, everything's gonna uh, use um, SSH key pairs. So if uh, what you do if that if you have functions that are not part of the LibCloud base API then you have to use the uh, EX uh, uh, you know, naming convention. So you see all the functions that are available. So list key pairs, list key pairs, tab completion. And here you see that I only have one, one key pair, okay? So let's create another key pair, for example. So it's going to be EX, create key pair. And we need to give it a name, name demo great key pair so you get you create a key pair it returns the private key stick that private key you're good to go if we go back to the dashboard and we list the key pair we see that the the demo key pair has been has been created um, we can do the same thing with security groups of course because once you start a machine you want to be able to uh, you know, access it. So let's let's look at all the security groups that we have in there. So you see that I already have a few security groups, you know. So I could create it, of course. I could create an additional uh, security group, create security group, and you see how things go, okay? Uh, now let's, let's create a machine. So it's going to be create node. So in that particular case, you see that I'm not using that EX extension functionality because create node is is common to all the clouds in LibCloud. So whether I'm using Amazon, OpenStack, or CloudStack, it's always going to be create node, okay? Uh, so it's going to be the same, the same call. So let's call it demo01. Uh, it takes an image uh, argument. I have preloaded an image uh, name, so you could specify your own image, you know, of course, here. You specify an instance type, so amount of RAM, number of, of CPUs, and so on. And then uh, we can specify a, a key pair. 
key name, uh, and I'm going to specify the exascale key. Okay, so that's how you start a machine. Uh, oh yeah. Node equals sorry connection. Connection. So that would be the same call in any cloud, OpenStack, EC2, you name it. Uh, it's fairly quick. Here I'm not specifying security groups. So since I'm not specifying security groups, it's going to use the default. Okay? And my default has SSH open. So we're fine. So here it returned. So if I look at my node object, you know, I have, I have my, uh, my node instance here running. And there is an extra attribute. So what we see here <coughs> that, you know, libcloud, uh, yeah, I cannot go here because of the mic. Uh, libcloud created the node here. It returned the node object. And then I have some extra attributes, which tells me that it's been created like right now, 1607, more or less. Uh, it tells me exoscale is the key. It gives me a password that's created at instantiation. Uh, but that's actually not going to work of, because of the way that Exoscale set up their own cloud. Okay? They don't allow uh, password access. Security group is default, and it gives you the, the zone. Okay? So if we go back to the dashboard, we should see an instance demo01 created. Yes? Yes. Okay. So demo01 has been created. And of course, if I take the IP address, Let's go here. No. Sorry. Wrong IP. Bang. <coughs> so here I have created an instance in that cloud in Switzerland using LibCloud, and I have uh, key pair access to it. So. Now I can do whatever I want. Okay, so that's the that's the basic functionality. LibCloud also has you know lots of other things that you could do with CloudStack, like uh, port forwarding, uh, you know, adding rules, authorizing, of course, specific rules in the security groups. Uh, you you name it, you could do you could do lots of things. If you want, I can show you later. If you're in, uh, if some of you want to see more, okay. So LibCloud, LibCloud is very nice, uh, works great. Now starting a node, that, that's kind of boring, okay? Works great. <laughs> uh, now how about Chef? Okay, so you wanna do, you wanna actually configure a machine, you wanna start a machine, and then you want to apply some recipes to it so that you can configure it. So what we're gonna do here, uh, I'm going to run Knife on my, uh, on my laptop. I'm going to start a machine in that cloud, the same cloud, Exoscale. Uh, I'm using uh, hosted chef, which means that this chef server, this master here, this chef server is actually hosted by Opscode. Okay? Uh, you need to do a little bit of setup with them, like uh, credentials and things like this. But once you set up on your laptop, I mean, it, it takes like, I don't know, 20 minutes to register for hosted chef and, and get set up. So what's going to happen is that, you know, we're going to start the machine and then the machine is going to contact the chef server download the recipes and then configure things. In our case here, what I want to do is, uh, is set up an Elasticsearch uh, node. Um, it's a little bit more advanced. I'm also going to set up Nginx so that I can access it through a, through a proxy. Um, so let's go here. Uh, which directory? This one, okay. So knife, knife is very nice. Uh, Knife CS cloud stack server list, you know, it's been configured. Okay, the line gets wrapped because the screen is too small. Uh, but I configured my keys in there so that it talks to that exoscale cloud, the same thing. So Knife CS server list, uh, I see the two instances that I have running. I see their IP, their uh, service type, their micro instances. I see their OS and, and things like this. Uh, I can also do things like uh, CS uh, template list to list the instances. So extremely similar functionality than with LibCloud, except that you know it's uh, it's with the Knife plugin. Uh, knife CS 
I think it's service list. So that, that, that's going to give me the, uh, the instance types that are available. OK, great. Uh, and I think they have a knife CS. Is it location? No. It's zo zone list. Sorry. Knife CS zone list. OK. So here it just lists the availability zones that I have in this cloud. So here I only have one. And we recognize that uh, Geneva, Switzerland uh, zone. Okay. So now to, uh, to start a machine and actually you know, give it some information so that it, uh, um, it, sets, it, it configures things, I'm going to hopefully back up. Ah, here you go. And use this command. Let's go back up so that you can you can see it better. Okay, so here you know instead of server list, I'm going to create sim very similar. Yeah, starting the node, uh, specifying the the instance type. It's a tiny instance. Specifying the template Ubuntu. I'm I'm saying that I'm going to SSH to that machine as root. Could be something else. I'm specifying a key, a key pair that I'm using. So this is the path to my private key. Remember that I've created key pairs on the cloud. So this is the path to the key pair that I'm going to use. And then run list, this is specific to Chef. Okay, Those guys, those of you using Chef, you recognize that you need to specify a run list. Here I've defined a role. And it's an Elasticsearch node. Actually, let's make that an Elasticsearch head. And we're going to look at that, uh, that role head. This is all chef stuff, OK? This is not cloud stack very specific. I mean, the commands are specific to the knife cloud stack plugin, but this is really chef configuration management stuff. Here I'm specifying that I want the instance to be started with the exoscale key. You know, I could create another type of key pair. I can also create a key pair with the knife cloud stack plugin, which is pretty cool. Specifying the security group. Here, I'm not using the default. I've created already previously an Elasticsearch uh, security group. Uh, and no public IP, that means that I don't want Knife to do anything to uh, enable static NAT or port forwarding or anything. Okay? So no public IP, it's basically a way of telling this, this plugin, don't do anything. And the reason I'm doing this is because the cloud gives me instances that have public IP addresses. So I don't need, you know, I don't need anything to happen. I don't need any, any NAT stuff, and and then I give it, um, I give it a name, an instance name. Okay, so let's say LinuxCon three. Okay, so we launch that. <coughs> Knife is written in Ruby, so it has, you know. Basically, it's making API call to that, that cloud, and it's going to start deploy virtual machine with the proper parameters. Uh, let's look at a, a, a look at that at that role here that's uh, that's defined here. Uh, what is it? Knife role. Edit Elasticsearch head. So that's again, you know, knife specific. This role is actually stored on the chef server at Opscode. Okay. And and what you see in that in that role here is that it's especially this run list has a list of recipes that are going to be applied to the, to the node. Uh, the, the apt, each of these recipe points to a cookbook, that's chef. Apt is just going to update you know, all the packages. Uh, it's going to install Git, because I, I, for something else, I needed Git. Uh, get Java, and then Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch has some nice recipe on GitHub. Uh, set up Nginx, and then configure everything as a, as a reverse proxy. So if you're trying to automate configuration of machine in the cloud, just prepare your run list for your machines, and then you know, you'll be good to go. Um, 
So here we see what's, what's happening is that, you know, we have the standard out of what's happening on the machine. It's shutting up the, the chef client. It's going to install the, the, the needed packages and configure things out. If we go back to our dashboard, we see that LinuxCon 3 has started and the machine is being bootstrapped. Okay? So we'll let it do its thing. It's not going to take too long. And then we'll, we'll get back to it. So knife integration in CloudStack works like a charm. Really, it's very nice. Uh, I don't have a, a Puppet example, but <coughs> I have a SaltStack example. Uh, there's a little backstory <laughs> with SaltStack, but because it's written in Python, um, I, I got involved and I wrote the, uh, the CloudStack uh, driver for SaltCloud. So SaltStack is just another configuration management out there, alternative to Chef and Puppet, you know, fine evaluate the one you prefer, pick the one you like, <laughs> whatever. Um, it has the equivalent of a knife plugin, kind of, okay? It's, uh, its functionality is much smaller, uh, but Soul Cloud is aimed at being a client that you can use to deploy those machines in the cloud and, and then configure them, okay? It's, a, it's not as powerful as knife, but that's, that's it's the idea. So what we're gonna do is that we're going to Instead of using, in the case of Knife, I used the, uh, a chef server hosted by Opscode. Here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to start a salt stack master in the cloud directly. And then I'm going to start additional nodes that are going to register with that master, okay? Uh, a little bit weird, but salt needs to run as root. Uh, and when you use salt cloud, can you read this? Yeah? Okay, so again, similar functions than you have with libcloud or knife, list location, exoscale. Uh, yeah, uh, I, should have, I should have fixed that. <laughs> don't, don't worry about the, uh, the dictionary and the warning as, as debugging things. Just, <laughs> just concentrate on the output uh, here. So you want to list the location, you're pointing to the cloud again, and it tells you exoscale is a cloud stack cloud. Uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, Confederation Helvetique, Genève. This is wrong, but that's it's a libcloud issue, a UID, whatever. Uh, so list location, again, of course, list images. And we're going to see the same error. Uh, so you list your images. You list your sizes. Fine. Tiny instance. It tells you one gig of RAM, okay, fine, same, same type of things. Uh, the way this works is that with, uh, with SALT, you define providers. So if I look at the exoscale provider uh, here, well, that's fine, I'll, I'll change my keys. Uh, it tells you API key, secret key, because that's what you need to talk to that API again. Specify the endpoint, the host, the path, uh, security group, that's the security group that I want to use when I'm going to start those machines. Uh, the user, you know, because of course it's need to SSH to, uh, to bootstrap things. Where is my private key? And the provider type, here I'm specifying CloudStack because it's going to use the CloudStack driver, okay? Uh, I could use another, another cloud. I define, you know, different type of information for a different cloud. Here I have three different uh, Cloud Stack Cloud that I can use. I, Ikula, Ikula, that's another production cloud in Paris that's using Cloud Stack. I'll change the keys, okay? I always forget to. Uh, so now, now you, we're connected to the cloud. We can, we can list things. Let's start a machine, okay? And let's call it demo03. So here I'm calling, I'm using salt cloud and I'm going dash P, it means use the profile. And first I need to deploy a master. So I have the name of a profile which I called Ubuntu Exoscale Master. I don't know why it's Exoscale-er. That's not going to work. Uh, so what you need to specify also is a set of profiles. So here I have a set of profile. The first one is a master. <coughs> And I'm saying which image type, which instance type I need to use, the interface for SSH, the key, 
And here I'm saying this, this profile here, make this a master. Okay? Fine. So we start this. So it's going to do its thing. Uh, yeah, the warning is fine. Uh, and here we see demo03 has already is in startup mode. Okay, so the instance has started and then salt is going to, to bootstrap it. Let's go back, let's go back a minute to Chef. Uh, uh, yeah, to Chef. So Chef has finished going through all the recipes. So technically we should have an Elasticsearch node running, right? <laughs> Hopefully. So I use Chrome. I use uh, Sense as a uh, Sense is a nice uh, Chrome plugin for um, uh, Elasticsearch, and so I need to find the IP of that node. Let's go back to the dashboard. It's this one. It's the 137. Well, just 37. So it installed Elasticsearch. It also installed Nginx as reverse proxy because I'm just doing this. Otherwise, anybody could hit the Elasticsearch cluster and start adding data. So here I have some basic uh, HTTP authentication. So here you go. These credentials are all set up uh, in, a, in a chef uh, data bag. I log in. I send the command. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> it configures things, but then, so let's SSH to the machine. Uh, yeah, sometimes it doesn't start properly, which is not the way it should work. There you go. <coughs> so here what we have done, okay, is that we've used knife, defined the recipes for Elasticsearch, Nginx, reverse proxy, created uh, credentials, and then in like, I don't know, five minutes, we've configured a node in the cloud with Elasticsearch installed. And now you have that, that, uh, that, uh, Elasticsearch node, only one, running, you could start putting data into it and it would index things and then you could do search and things like this. Uh, I also have recipes to add node. So we, I could start additional nodes and they would automatically uh, join, well, almost automatically, I'm still debugging a few things. <laughs> they would join the cluster and we would have, you know, let's say 10 machines uh, in that Elasticsearch cluster. Okay, cool. I think it's very cool. Uh, so it looks like here, uh, salt is still going. Salt is still doing its thing. There ah, you go. <coughs> so finally it went through. So same thing then with Chef and any configuration management. Now it's bootstrapping the machine and it knows that it needs to make this node a, a master. So it's going through all the packages and, and installing things. Um, so we'll get back to it. Okay, shouldn't, shouldn't take too long. The, uh, the last one that I wanted to mention is uh, Weir, Apache Weir. It's a top level project also at the Apache Software Foundation. It uses JetClouds. And Weir was uh, especially created for big data, okay? So if you're trying to go deploy a Hadoop cluster uh, with whatever distribution, CD, the, the basic Hadoop or uh, Cloudera, uh, or you want to put HBase on it for big table, uh, uh, Yarn for MapReduce, uh, you name it, uh, you can use Weir. You can also use Weir to, uh, to deploy Cassandra, uh, even Elasticsearch, uh, you know, you, you could do it. So basically, where is orchestrating the deployment of multiple nodes in that cloud, okay? Deploying one machine is easy. Deploying, you know, dozens of them and have them, you know, linked uh, is, uh, is harder, okay? So look at where it can be used. Uh, where can be used as a, 
uh, as a library. Well, actually, salt has finished. Okay, so salt has finished configuring everything, and it returned. So what I'm going to do here, actually, I'm going to launch uh, additional nodes. Okay, so they're going to be in salt terminology. They're called minions. So let's start another node with salt that we're going to call minion, and let's let it do it do its uh, do its thing. Okay. Um, so let's go here and let's go back to uh, talking about uh, where. So you could use where as a Java library, writing Java code and actually using uh, where as a library and then you know deploying things, or you can use it as a common line client. Okay. Um, if you use it as a common line client, then you need to define configuration file for the cluster that you want to start. Okay. So here, that's an example of uh, an Hadoop cluster that you find. It's pretty, it's pretty basic. Uh, you have a, you know, keys that you define. So the name of the cluster, Hadoop. Uh, here, this is a, a little trick to configure HC host if DNS is causing you issue. Uh, <coughs> define a key pair for access, you know, to the machines again. Uh, define, uh, you know, uh, yeah, client seeder was for the access. And here you see you define your cluster. So you have one Hadoop name node, that's your head node, and then 10, uh, 10 data nodes. Okay? So you could, you could have 5, 15, you name it, you, you pick. Um, going down, this one is interesting. It tells you this one here says, I want to use Cloudera Hadoop distribution 4. Uh, and here it's telling, you know, how to install and, and configure. Then you define, of course, the UIDs of the image uh, instance type that you want to use. Okay. And here you define the cloud that, you, that you're going to, to use to deploy that cluster. So it's a CloudStack cloud. There is very good support for CloudStack in JClouds. Define the endpoint, the, uh, the ID of the template that you want to use. Okay, so if I didn't go over my quota of machine in that cloud, <laughs> uh, can you read that? So you would go where, launch, cluster, config, and you just type the uh, configuration file. Okay, uh, that's, that's, the, e that's the, uh, the basic use of, uh, of where. So now, same thing. Where is going to talk to that cloud? Use J clouds to, to use the talk to the API. Start 10, machine, 10 or 11 machines, and then SSH onto them and bootstrap uh, Cloudera so that you get a Hadoop cluster. Let's go back. Hip, and here we're seeing that I have all my Hadoop nodes. So I have I should have my salt stack minion demo 04 that has started. And then I have all my Hadoop nodes. You see that the name has been picked up by Weir automatically, and they are, they are in startup mode. Okay? So we have to leave that little bit of time to configure, you know, start, configure Hadoop, get Hadoop running. Now, if we look at, uh, if we are back to Salt, here we, so we have started a master, and here I've started uh, um, a minion. Okay? So my master, what we need to do now is actually, you know, connect to the master, uh, which I guess is uh, this one. One thirty-eight. Yep. So let's connect. Let's connect to the master node, which lives in the cloud. Ah, no. I shouldn't have to do that. <laughs> uh, maybe it's the virtual end stuff. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I'm connected to that, that master and I should be able to do salt key dash L. Uh. 
So what I'm trying to do here is that <coughs> I've deployed a master and I've deployed two minions. The way salt works is that now, ah, okay, <laughs> I made a mistake. <laughs> My bad. Okay. So I've deployed the master and I've deployed the minions. So salt normally should, the, the minions should automatically know where is their master and they should contact the master on a specific port and say, hey, I'm available for you if you need to configure me. Okay, and they established a, a secure channel by you know uh, defining keys, but I did a mistake, which is I forgot to edit my uh, my profile. Now you'll see you'll see why. Here I've defined the profile for the master node, but the profile for the minion here I need to put the uh, that's that's a limitation to Soul Cloud. It's not automatic. Is that you need to uh, you need to enter the IP of, uh, of the master, okay? So what has happened, I started the two minions and they are trying to contact a master that doesn't exist, okay? So 1928, 138. So what we're gonna do is 04, we're going to delete 04. I'm just gonna try a new one. Okay, my bad. That's the problem with live demos. Sometimes you, <laughs> you make mistakes. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna let, let that mean start. Let's go back to Word to see what's happening here. Okay, so here again, you know, we see Word doing its job, which is configuring. It started all the nodes and now it's configuring Hadoop. And <coughs> so where is Java? But of course there is some bash at one point because the installation and the configuration is just basically bash scripts that are, uh, you know, pre-set up in, uh, in where. So you see the, the bash, uh, you know, being, uh, being executed here. Um, so, you know, copying the configuration file, defining variables, okay. So yeah, I guess it, it may take 10 minutes to start uh, to start a Hadoop cluster of 10 nodes. Okay, while we, while we wait a little bit, we, I'm done. So maybe we can, we can wait to, uh, to, see, uh, to see success. But basically what I wanted, the message that I wanted to tell you is that, okay, fine, you pick, you pick the, cloud, the, the cloud solution that you want. And now, you know, you have a cloud now what? So you're, you're going to want to do on-demand provisioning of machines and you're going to want to automate configuration of those machines, not only single machines, but also clusters. So you're going to need tools to do this and you're going to need uh, to work on the, uh, the automation, okay? And, you know, if with CloudStack here, hopefully I've, uh, I've showed you that you can use, you know, lots of tools. Uh, you pick your language, you know, if you're more comfortable with Ruby or Python, you can, you can pick your language. If you're comfortable with Puppet or Chef or SaltStack, you know, you can pick. Uh, we are really trying to, to get very good support for CloudStack in, in all those tools uh, to allow you to, uh, to basically, you know, automate things and then build really on-demand uh, infrastructure. Um, so thanks a lot. You can, uh, you can follow me on Twitter. I post a lot of uh, tutorials and, uh, and screencasts on how to do uh, all those things. Um, of course, the uh, Apache, uh, the CloudStack website, uh, cloudstack.apache.org or www.cloudstack.org. We are on IRC. The entire community is on IRC. You can find all the slides on SlideShare, screencast on YouTube, uh, you name it. If you want to participate in CloudStack, then uh, you, know, you go through the website, of course. And then uh, Apache is all about mailing lists, so you join the mailing list and you, you start uh, participating. Put some filters because we have quite a bit of traffic on those lists, uh, so you don't want to be inundated of, uh, you know, of email. So filter your CloudStack email and, uh, and then participate. Um, we have a CloudStack conference in Amsterdam, November 20th and 22nd. Uh, First day is uh, hackathon workshops. We have Jenkins workshop, Chef workshop, Elasticsearch workshop. 
Uh, and then the, the, the following days, the 21st, 22nd, we have talks from users, people who have deployed CloudStack in production, public cloud, private cloud, and, uh, and also you know, developers, of course, talking about new features and, and so on. So I can take uh, I can take a few questions if you want while we while we wait things haven't finished here um, we're still working and salt is still working on that on that minion here yep not done yet so do you have any questions. One question. I need at least one question. <laughs> Last talk of the day. And thanks, guys, for coming. I know, you know, sticking around until the end is uh, always difficult. Okay. So that minion has started. If I fixed it correctly, I should start seeing the, that minion register with my master. Okay. So let's go back to my SSH session here. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so you see that it showed up. That means that <coughs> the master and the minion are in the same security group and it's set up so that the, the port is open. It's like 4505 or something. Uh, so they, they managed to you know, make a handshake and the master is saying, hey, I got a request from this guy, demo 5 he wants, uh, he wants me to accept his keys, so you need, to, you need to say yes, capital A, yeah. The following keys are going to be accepted, demo 05, do you want to accept? Yes, I want to accept. Okay, fine, now accepted keys, demo 05, so I've registered that minion, so that means that now I can use all the, por the power of salt to configure it, okay. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to show you a recipe, but the basic test is to is to say, you know, ping. Okay, fine. <laughs> so the master has managed to uh, to ping that minion. Um, salt salt recipe are kind of nice because they are you don't need to learn Ruby or you don't need to learn uh, a DSL specific, which is the case for Puppet and uh, and Chef. The the recipes in Salt are all uh, YAML uh, YAML files. So you want to see a salt recipe? <laughs> uh, let me show you a salt recipe. React. Application text mate. So that's a salt recipe. <coughs> so it's all it's all YAML based. So here it says, for example, a repo. Uh, that's the name of the repo. Uh, disabled, no. Here's the key that you need to set up and uh, require you want, uh, you want the React package from that repo. And here you define React. It says what it requires. It requires the React repo package, okay? So you don't need to learn a, a, a language. I'm not an expert in salt, but that to me is a little bit easier than, uh, than learning you know, especially I like Chef a lot, but I don't know Ruby, so it's a little bit more challenging for me to learn a, a Chef recipe. Do you have something like Uh, I I don't know. I don't know. No? Do you know? I don't know. Yeah. So, Chef is nice with databags, so that you know those credentials that I use for uh, for Elasticsearch, they are stored in a databag. Uh, but basically, you have those recipes, and then you just tell the master, you know, you just say, hey, install that, install that recipe, and then you have, uh, you've configured your node. Okay. Uh, let's go back here. Oh, yeah. Our Hadoop cluster has, is finished. So let's SSH to the master. So again, here, I'm in the cloud in Switzerland, and hopefully it should have a Hadoop cluster that's ls forward slash. Yeah. So I'm saying yeah, but I actually know that there's a little bug that I'm not going to show you. But 
<laughs> it installed it installed Hadoop. I, I have an issue with the, uh, the the security groups, so MapReduce uh, MapReduce doesn't work. But now you have a, a ten node Hadoop cluster in the cloud. You can start putting data and uh, and run Map uh, MapReduce job. I have a, I have a full uh, tutorial on on how to do this, and uh, and I think that's a world record. I think we did that in uh, fifteen minutes. <laughs> okay. One more question for the road. No? You guys were interested in cloud stack or were interested in tooling? Both? Cool. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, I'm sticking around, so if you want to ask you know, additional questions, don't hesitate. And otherwise, Twitter. Uh, these days is probably the easiest way to uh, to ping me and uh, I'll post the slides even though you know there's not much content in the actual slides but I think they'll, they'll put the presentation online and and you can look at all those packages I I maintain the uh, the cloud stack driver in uh, libcloud and salt stack uh, and knife the knife cloud stack plugin is maintained by some guys in um, Amsterdam Okay, so if there are any issues, if you start using those uh, those packages uh, and you you run into issues because you're you're doing a scenario that you know is not yet covered by the tool, we can we can easily uh, fix it quickly. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot.